this video is going to try to explain the process progression test. Um, and two things to keep in mind is that with the present progressive test, some of our books will also call this um, present do again with form and motion, just like we did with simple present. We'll start here with uh, present continuous form and function. In present continuous, um, we actually use a helping verb this time in our affirmative sentences. So this is different than simple present tense. We still start with the subject, but then we have the helping verb, the main verb, and the object. So a little bit different than simple present tense. For present progressive, our helping verb is the be verb in the simple present tense, which gets a little confusing. So we either use am, is, or are as our helping verb. The main verb in present progressive is a verb plus ing. So it's the ing form of the verb. This is really confusing because in simple present tense, am, is, and are can be main verbs, right? But um, in present progressive, they can't be. In present progressive tense, am, is, and are are helping verbs, and then the main verb is a do verb with ing at the end. So let's look at a couple examples. And then I'm going to use my helping verb. And so we know for the subject I that we use am as our helping verb. And then I might use the verb teach. Now I'm not going to use the simple verb this time, simple form of the verb. This time I'm going to use the ing form of the verb. I am teaching. And of course, what am I teaching? I am teaching English. Okay, I might say something like she. This time my helping verb is going to be is for she. Uh, just like before, he, she, it in singular nouns for is. And then my main verb, I might say something like she is studying English. Okay. And then let's do one more with they. If I use they, I'm going to use the helping verb are. And they are learning. Let's do something different. They are learning math. We're all learning English, but they are learning math. Okay? So it goes subject, helping verb, main verb, object. Okay. Negative sentences, we use the same pattern that we did with simple present tense. We start with subject, then helping verb, then we use not, then our main verb, and then the object. So it goes subject, helping verb, not, main verb, object, and that's our little formula. Let's do an example with she. So we'll say she. I'm going to use my helping verb, she is. And then I want to use not to make the sentence negative. She is not study. And I'm going to add ing to the main form of the verb there. She is not studying. And what is she not studying? She is not studying French. Right? Because she's studying English, so she's not studying French. Something to keep in mind with present progressive is that I can use contractions, so I can say she isn't, or if I have are not, I could use the contraction aren't to make that negative. Okay. Moving on to yes or no questions. Again, here the formula stays the same, so it's very easy to remember in English. The sentence patterns pretty much stay the same. So in yes or no questions, I start with the helping verb, then the subject, then the main verb, and then the object. So I get helping verb plus subject plus main verb plus subject in my question. So I might get something like this. Is she? studying, and then what 
let's just use a different. Is she studying chemistry? And just like before, my answer is either going to be yes or no. Now, again, in my short answer, I'm going to use the helping verb. So I might say, yes, she is, or no, she, and we use the contraction here, no, she isn't. Okay? Yes or no questions. And then finally, uh, for WH questions, I'm going to start with my WH word, but everything else is the same as yes or no questions, helping verb first, subject, main verb, and then my object. So WH question, helping verb, subject, main verb, and then my object. So going back to um, our uh, example before, we might say where, where, and then we're going to start with the helping verb, where is she studying and let's go back to English this time where is she studying English she's studying English at Harper okay so remember the answer to WH questions is always going to be some information all right so now we've talked about the form of present progressive let's talk about the function okay um, and there's really two big ways that we use present progressive. So um, one, way, one way, and the most common way probably that we use present progressive is to talk about um, actions in progress now. In other words, at this moment, at this exact moment, what is going on? What is happening? So we see words like now, right now, at the moment. Those are all your clues that the action is happening in this exact moment. For example, right now, in this moment, I am making a video. All right, so right now, I am making a video. That's what's happening in this exact moment. Another big way that we use present progressive is to talk about an action that is temporary or an action that is changing. Now remember, when we talked about simple present tense, we talked about actions that are facts generally true. They're permanent, right? You don't really change. So present progressive is a way for us to talk about actions that do change. Actions, something is temporary, something that's temporary, that means that it's not forever, that it won't last forever. It's going to change. An action that changed, right? An action that's changing, that means that it's becoming something different. It was one thing and now it's going to be something different. Um, so those we use this way of using present progressive to talk about um, an action that is ongoing at the moment. It's probably going to continue for some time in the future, but not forever. At some point in the future, it's going to end or it's going to change. So we use words um, to express this. We use words like currently, these days, nowadays, um, and we use words also like, for example, this plus a time. So I might say this month, year, or maybe this semester. Um, I might say something like today. That would be another good time word to give you a clue that you should be using present, present progressive. Uh, so for example, this semester... We are learning online, but hopefully uh, soon we'll be back to face-to-face -to -face classes and we won't be learning online forever. I wanted to remind you about non-action verbs. We talked about non-action verbs with present uh, simple, simple present tense. 
um, that we use non-action verbs uh, like for emotions and mental states, for state of being verbs, for measurements, for the uh, perception verbs like the five senses. And what I, the reason I want to bring this up again is because non-action verbs, um, you cannot use in progressive tenses. Okay, the reason we call progressive tenses progressive, present progressive, past progressive, future progressive, is because they are actions in progress. That means they're ongoing, they take time, they have a duration, right? They're, they're taking time. They're not just a single moment in time. They're on what we call ongoing. Continuous, progressive, ongoing, all these words have the same time. So if an action is progressive, that means it has to be able to take time. Now, if it can't take time, in other words, if there's no action, if it's, if it's a non-action non verb, if there's no action, it can't take time because it just is, it exists. It's not taking any amount of time, it's just there. The action is just happens, it's just there. So that means I cannot use non-action verbs in the progressive tenses. I can't say, for example, I can't say, um, I am loving my husband. Okay, and no, it's a non-action verb, love, it's an emotion. So what I have to say instead is I have to say I love my husband. And this is true even no matter what, even if you use a time word that normally would be for progressive tense, you have to use the simple present tense if it's a non-action verb. So for example, if I say today, she is seeming sad. Mm -mm. Nope. Seem is a linking verb. Seem is a non-action verb, so I cannot use it in the progressive tense. Even though I have my time word today that I usually use with present progressive, I have to use the simple present tense form. She seems sad. Today she seems sad. Okay. Now, sometimes this becomes a little bit confusing is because some verbs have two meanings. Some verbs have an action meaning and a non-action meaning. And this gets a little bit confusing. Uh, a lot of the five senses, so for example, if I say I taste, um, oops, hang on, that's not what I wanted to do. If I say the soup tastes delicious. Right? In this case, taste is a perception verb. It's a non-action verb. I'm just describing the taste of the soup. There's no action happening. But if I say something like this, I am tasting the soup, now all of a sudden, the action is, is it's there. I'm, the action is that I'm physically bringing the soup into my mouth. <laughs> Right? I'm, I'm slurping it up with my spoon. So there's a physical action happening. So this is one meaning. And then this is a second meaning. This one is non-action. And then this one is action. Just to, there's, just to give you one more example of this, I can do this also with other verbs. Um, I'll give you one with the verb have. Okay, so for example, I can say I have two dogs. Okay, in this case, have is non-action. It's a possession, it's a non-action. Or I can say, I am having fun. I am having fun. So in this case, that's a second meaning. It's a different meaning, and that's an action meaning. Still, the first meaning is non-action. It's possession. Here, the second meaning is an action meaning. It means to experience.
other words that have a difference in meaning. A lot of the perception verbs like taste or smell can have two meanings. Have can have two meanings. Um, think can have two meanings. If you're not sure, uh, there's a link. Um, there's a lot of resources out there where you can look up non-action verbs and read a little bit more about that. Okay. One more thing that I want to talk about with, with uh, present progressive is um, some verbs are uh, some verbs are quick actions. In other words, the action in its definition means that it happens really quickly. That action doesn't take time. It's closed, it's closed, it's closed, it's closed, and then I open it and it's open. So I wouldn't say I am opening the door. Unless for some reason I was really taking a long time to open the door, like very slowly opening the door, I would not say that. Same idea. With leave, leave or arrive, right? If I say, I'm there, I'm there, I'm there, I'm there, I'm there, and then all of a sudden I decide it's time to go, and I leave. Or, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm on my way, I'm coming, and then I'm there, I arrive. So those quick actions also cannot be used in the progressive tense, because in their meaning, there's no amount of time. There's no length of time, there's no duration, so you can't use them with the progressive tense. Okay, I uh, hope that helps. And that's the end of progressive.